Please be seated. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he was seated on the throne, said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord Jesus gave the Apostle John a vision of the way that things were meant to be and of the way that things will be when Jesus returns for those who have put their trust in him. But before anything came to pass, when God had created mankind, male and female, after his own image, he also created marriage to be a picture of the way that things ought to be. A picture of Christ's love for his bride, his church. Beloved family and friends, we are here today assembled in the presence of God to celebrate as a foretaste of what is to come the gift that God has given of marriage to humankind. We are here to join Mark Capper and Caroline Terry in holy marriage, which is instituted by God, regulated by his commandments, and to be held in honor among all people everywhere. Let us therefore remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and happiness of mankind. Our Lord Jesus Christ blessed marriage by his presence at the wedding in Cain of Galilee, and he confirmed it as a divine ordinance and a union not to be severed. Our Savior declared that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and therefore what God has joined together, let not man separate. By his apostles, God has instructed those who enter into this relationship to cherish a mutual esteem and love, to bear with each other's infirmities and weaknesses, to comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow, in honesty, in industry, to provide in temporal things for each other and their household, to pray for and encourage one another in all things which pertain to God, to live together as the heirs of the grace of life. The Apostle Paul set forth the sacred and exalted nature of marriage when he likened it to the mystical union that subsists between Christ and his church. We are not all huddled on the courthouse steps this morning, waiting for a judge to show up, but we are assembled here amidst a congregation of many who love the Lord Jesus Christ, led by ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in a worship service where our intent is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ because Mark and Caroline take seriously the presence of Jesus Christ as the very core of their marriage union. 
They desire that your attention today focus on the Lord Jesus Christ as the source of their love, as the strength of their relationship, and their only hope for lasting fulfillment in the marriage covenant. Please join with me in prayer. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, O great Jehovah, we bow with humility and joy before your holy presence. As today we bear witness to that sacred mystery that is not just about Mark and Caroline, but about Christ and his church. And we with joy assemble here as witnesses to the new covenant that you are creating, the bond between one man and one woman, just as you created marriage to be. And so we pray that your spirit would rest upon them and indeed would rest upon us, that you would dwell gladly on our praises as we glorify your name this day at the work that you have done in the many marriages presence in the work that you have yet to do in all of our marriages but especially in the creation of this new family this new marriage we beg your presence we beg your power we pray that you would overflow this tent with your love and your grace that we might see but just a foretaste of what is yet to come on that day when Christ will return to claim his bride. And may our hearts be strengthened and encouraged to look for that day because of what we witness here today. Please do now come upon us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Please now stand and join us as we sing our hymn of praise this morning, Joy to the World.
Be seated. There you go. You remembered well. They never remember to face me. They keep staring at each other. This is great. But y'all can, can get a little closer, okay? This is your wedding. Well, it's time for you two to declare your tent before God and these witnesses. You first, brother. Mark, will you have Caroline to be your wife and promise yourself to her in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, that you will live with her and cherish her, and that you will be faithful to her, forsaking all others in the sacred covenant of marriage, will you? I will. And I'm trying to call you Caroline and not Carol all day. So <laughs> Caroline, will you have Mark to be your wedded husband and, and promise yourself to him in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, that you will live with him and cherish him, and that you will be faithful to him, forsaking all others in the sacred covenant of marriage, will you? You bet I will. <laughs> uh, Mr. Clerk, that was I, I will. <laughs> Mark, you promised the Lord by his grace to receive Caroline to be your wife, to endeavor with her to build a marriage upon your mutual submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. And by your own readiness to take initiative for spiritual leadership through sacrificial service in your home. For as long as you both shall live, do you? I do. Caroline, do you promise the Lord by His grace to receive Mark to be your husband, to endeavor with him to build a marriage upon your sub mutual submission to the Lord Jesus Christ, and by your own readiness to submit to his spiritual leadership in your home for as long as you both shall live, do you? I do. Our scripture reading this evening comes from Romans chapter 14, beginning in verse 7, and we'll read through verse 9. Give your careful attention to the reading of God's holy word. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that He might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Amen. And may God add His richest blessing to the reading and the hearing of His holy word. You guys are brave. You see, you ask a Presbyterian minister to, to preach from Ephesians 1 or from anywhere in Romans, and we get this wild look on our face like we were built for this. Okay? I've got this, but I assure all of you we won't be too long here. But some thoughts. I can tell you all aren't married yet, or you wouldn't have picked this passage. Because see, when you fail to live up to this ideal to each other, perhaps before the day's over with, you can no longer plead ignorance to each other because I told you so. <laughs> it would have been better off to keep the ignorance maybe for a little while. On a serious note, how on earth could Paul actually mean these words? And he meant them. How on earth could we actually mean these words? Because it, it, it could sound like grandstanding, right? Like this is the Sunday school answer. How are you supposed to live unto the Lord? Right? But he meant these words. Let's dig into how. To understand anything Paul wrote, you've got to think back to his conversion. You've got to think back to that Damascus Road experience. He had just gone from killing the church. He was going to kill more people. He hated Jesus, and all of a sudden something incredible happened. The Lord Jesus visited him. He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And in that moment, see, we know a lot from the passage, but not everything. Not every human emotion was recorded in that passage. In that moment... Paul, something, Paul saw something so lovely about Jesus, so compelling about Jesus, that instantaneously he went from hating him to saying, I will live the rest of my life and die a death one day unto the Lord. I am his and he is mine. How on earth in this marriage can you mean these words? looking at the Lord Jesus. See, for Paul, you're the seminary student, but you, you've licked your chops and you've done a little Greek yourself back in undergrad, okay? In Christ, in Christ, Paul always talked about being in Christ. 
And if you're united to Christ, all these benefits flow from that. Here's what I can say to y'all this afternoon. The way we actually, and the way you as a couple will actually live these words to each other. That your life will not be unto yourself. And not even ultimately unto one another, but unto the Lord. Never grow weary of remembering how lovely Jesus is. It never got old for Paul. And that included prison cells, and that included being stoned, and that included being whipped, and it included being hated by people who should have otherwise loved him. He never lost sight of how beautiful Jesus was. Now, on a good day, on a good day, you'll be able to do it well enough. Oh, but here's when you desperately need to remember how lovely Jesus is. When you finally plop down on the couch beside each other at the end of a long day and realize we butchered this. I was all about me today. And you took the brunt of it. You see, in that moment, that's when we need to make sure we remember how beautiful Jesus is. Because a couple things are going to happen if you can remember how beautiful Jesus is in that moment. One is, the person who did blow it is going to remember that most importantly, Jesus still loves them. In their failure, He still loves them. But the more amazing reality is this, the one who's been offended can now say, I forgive you. Why? Because through this hardship, through this moment, through this day, through this failure on your part, I still remember how beautiful Jesus is. And I can forgive you because of that. I believe that you two picked these verses because you want your marriage to actually reflect this. Which means I believe that you two are going to have to constantly come back to the gospel over and over and over again. I say this to my congregation all the time, but I just wish that every Sunday when we gathered for worship, it was, this, it was as if we're hearing the good news for the very first time. Oh, you would not be able to contain our joy if every Lord's Day we could come in and say, you mean He rose again for me? Y'all in your marriage. Every time you wake up and roll over and see that that person's still there, you, you, you look at Jesus and say, if, if He has brought this to, to pass, He's got to be amazing. He's got to be altogether lovely. He's got to be better than I can even fathom. And what's incredible is when you keep that picture of Jesus before your eyes, this will grow into something beautiful. Because make no mistake about it, if you live unto yourselves and not unto the Lord, you will rip each other apart. Why? Well, because of that old sin nature, see? See, that's what we'd like to do. Our default setting is me, mine, I. What Jesus is saying is no. See, when you get a glimpse of me, that's no longer how you want to live. That's no longer how you're going to be satisfied. And so the amazing thing is, you're actually going to learn that your greatest level of happiness is when you die to yourself to serve her. When you die to yourself to serve him. Why? Because in that moment... You're able to see the gospel lived out in your very homes. So how can we mean this? How can this not just be some sentimental verses we pick today? Year by year, moment by moment, Jesus better remain beautiful in your eyes. And this is where y'all come in. And this is where y'all come in. If they ever forget, what are we going to do? We're going to take our hands and gently place it on their cheeks and we're going to look in their eyes and maybe there'll be some tears. And we're going to say, would you please just remember how beautiful Jesus is? Mom, dad, that goes for y'all. Family, friends, that goes for y'all. They're not going to need to be told they blew it. They're, not going to need, they're going to need to be told Jesus is sufficient. Jesus is lovely. Jesus is enough. He and I will do it. Let, let's, he and I will really do it. And they might, not, they might not like our version of how that reminder comes across. Or I, I shouldn't speak for Sammy. They won't like my version of how that comes across. But that's what we're here for. That's what these witnesses are here for. Okay, there's good food in Mississippi. I didn't drive here to eat your food tonight. I came here 
Because I believe that what y'all have led all of us into is just a brief moment of how beautiful Jesus is. So that's the first thing. Second thing, much more briefly. <laughs> why, are we, why did y'all pick a passage? Why are we even bringing up the word death? This is a wedding, not a funeral. <laughs> why? Because if Jesus has even had victory over death, if Jesus is even Lord over death, then He is Lord over every single thing that will ever happen in your marriage and lives. It also means that His resurrection power, His resurrection victory, and His intercession for both of you at the right hand of the Father will speak into and guide and protect and guard every single thing about your lives, even unto death. What does that mean? He's got the whole world in His hands, and now He has this new marriage in His hands. It also means that He wants you to love her and guard her heart. And He wants you to love Him and be tender towards His heart. But it means that truly, truly you two have nothing to fear. Because Paul is saying, I'm going to die for Jesus one day, but then I'll be with Him. You're going to have hard days, hard seasons. Some of it will be not from your making, the most painful moments might be of your making. When you blow it, He has not. When you've forgotten His loveliness, He has not become any less lovely. And He has not forfeited His rights over your hearts, your lives, and your marriage either. Why? He has defeated death. The grave couldn't hold him. And so he rose again on the third day, and after doing ministry, went back and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Where with his nail-pierced wounds, he's praying for you two. Do you all know the Lord Jesus is praying for them right now? That if you're in Christ, the Lord Jesus is praying for you right now? And he'll never stop. And so I've got amazing hope for you two. Amazing hope for your marriage because I believe that Jesus is good. And I believe that the gospel is good news. And so I believe that that's going to be lived out in your lives together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Y'all, let's stand together and sing to the Lord as loud as we can. All glory be to Christ.
Amen. You may be seated. You guys are already facing each other. Well done. Thank you. We've come to the good stuff. Mark, you can repeat after me. I, Mark Andrew Capper. I, Mark Andrew Capper. Take you, Caroline Cottrell Terry. Take you, Caroline Cottrell Terry. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And I do promise and covenant before God and these witnesses. And I do promise and covenant before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. To love you and cherish you. To love you and cherish you. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. According to God's holy word. According to God's holy word. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Carol, are you ready? I'm ready. I, Caroline Cottrell Terry. I, Caroline Cottrell Terry. Take you, Mark Andrew Capper. Take you, Mark Andrew Capper. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And I do promise and covenant before God and these witnesses. And I do promise and covenant before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. To love you and cherish you. To love you and cherish you. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. According to God's holy word. According to God's holy word. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Amen. Can I see the rings? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we got it. Yep. All right, Mark, you first. You can place the ring on Carol, Caroline's finger. And you can repeat after me. Caroline? Caroline. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a visible symbol. As a visible symbol. Of my solemn vow of abiding love. Of my solemn vow of abiding love. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And with all that I have. And with all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Caroline? There we go. You ready? Mark? Mark? I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a visible symbol. As a visible symbol. Of my solemn vow of abiding love. Of my solemn vow and abiding love. And with all that I am. With all that I am. And with all that I have. All that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your great love for us that we have seen most beautifully and clearly and heard even this day in our Lord Jesus, the lover of our souls, our anchor, our hope, our rock of refuge. And Lord, we pray for Mark and Carolina as they have just entered into the covenant of marriage that you would anchor them even this day, remind them, anchor them, secure them in your love for them. <coughs> and your joy and delight over them, that they might learn as they look to you to learn how to love one another well. On the good days, would you give them the joy of your great love for us, and the bad days, would you remind them of the forgiveness of sins that is ours in Christ Jesus, and give them that mercy and grace and patience that you have for us toward one another. And Lord, we pray these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. By the authority given me as a minister of Jesus Christ, I declare that Mark and Caroline are now husband and wife according to the will of God. 
in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, whom therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You may now kiss your bride. It is my great honor and joy to present to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Mark Andrew Capper.